I, I am, I am what you would, uh, what you would, might call a practicing atheist. <laughs> I'm quite happy to be an atheist because I think actually God likes atheists better. We never ask him for anything. We're not bothering him all the time saying, oh God, please help me, I'm a this thing. <laughs> and as a practicing atheist, there's certain things that <clears throat> I travel around the world and no matter where I go, Somebody called Gideon leaves me this book to read. <laughs> it's an Irish book because it says it all began at the beginning. <laughs> but there, are certain, there are certain things that, <clears throat> when I read the Bible, and I do read the Bible, that, that I find difficult to understand. I mean, if God has been there forever, what was he doing before he got to us? <laughs> I mean, what was he out there doing? Was he sitting there going... Blah, 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 blah. <laughs> Bored today, what'll I do? I mean, suddenly from nowhere, he suddenly decided to create a world. I'll make a world, that's what. Make a world, yes, that's what I'll do. Rivers, seas, boom, mountains. Boom, everything is there. I want a garden. I'd like a nice garden. Quack, gardening. Hate gardening. <laughs> Need a garden. Ah. Gardener, spit and dust. Adam. Hey! And he, Adam, never once says, where in the name of God did I come from? <laughs> I mean, he's 40 years of age. He has no child and he has no recall. He doesn't say, how did I get here? But he's quite happy. He just kind of trundles around the garden, working away. And God is looking at him. And he sees that Adam is happy. <laughs> Put him there to be happy. I'll put a stop to that. And God, during the night, sneaks down like a thief and steals, doesn't ask, doesn't request, doesn't, steals it, his rib. And from his rib, he makes woman. And Adam wakes up in the morning, he's a real thicky. He's lying there, he's like, and there's somebody else, he doesn't say, where did you come from? Where, how the hell did you get here? Where did, you, where did you get those lumps? <laughs> Just goes out and goes gardening. <laughs> and God comes down and has a conversation with Eve and tells her that she can eat of any fruit in the tree in the whole garden with the exception of one fruit tree. He's talking to a woman. <laughs> he actually tells her not to eat of the fruit. And then when she says, which tree can I eat? He said, that one over there. He points it out to her. <laughs> and when he goes and hides, and she sneaks up to the tree, and a snake comes down and has a conversation. A snake. Now, if I see a snake, I'll back off. <laughs> One starts talking, I'll crap myself. <laughs> and the snake actually convinces her to eat the apple. And she eats the apple. And when she eats the apple, she learns shame. That's what happens when you eat apples. <laughs> now, she's not ashamed that she's disobeyed God or that she's eaten the apple. She's ashamed of one... Here, one part of her body, that's all. She becomes ashamed of that area of the body. Now, why that area? Why not her elbow? Her nose. Do, do you actually realize that if Eve had been ashamed of her nose, every woman in the world now would be ashamed of your noses? You'd all be sitting here tonight with little nose knickers on. Men would be in nightclubs watching totally naked ladies with G-strings on the nose. <laughs> Take them off. Oh, I saw a nose. <laughs> and this is the book. This is the book that you'll go into court and place your hand upon. 